You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and I love when you kind of start with that little voice thing that you just, you don't even know you did it. <laughs> well, that's fun. Uh, this is episode 657. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. As always, we appreciate it probably more than you'll ever know. Hope you're having a great day. We do appreciate it. And I just want to apologize for the audio on the last episode that is completely and 100% my fault. Oh, I don't know. I'm sitting right by the machine as well, so <laughs> let's call it our fault. Oh, yeah, it's my fault. Anyway, uh, we're really excited today to talk about how you can potentially integrate drones into your existing business. But before we get there, if you are creating videos for your business, you should know that you need to use copyright-free music. Otherwise, your videos could be taken off of Facebook, taken off of Instagram, and taken off of YouTube without you even knowing it. So if you're not on top of those channels, you could have some problems. And that's why I want to tell you about our friends at Videoblocks. That's V-I-D-E-O-B-L-O-C-K-S dot com forward slash drone, where you can get a discount to Videoblocks and Audioblocks.com so that you can use copyright free music, copyright free clips, motion templates, and so much more. Now there are millions of different assets that you can use for your videos. So don't sacrifice quality for price. Check out Videoblocks.com forward slash drone drone absolutely let's get into our question what's up guys my name is jeremy calling you out of westchester county new york my question for you today is how do i get the company i work for to hire or incorporate my drone business i work for a security company we deal with residential commercial berg and fire alarm systems and we also deal with um radio transmissions between police stations and schools. And I am looking to find a way to talk to my employers about the services I can offer to them, but I want to be able to do it in a way where I don't want to get fired. (laughs) So I was hoping you guys can help me out with this one. Um, And I really look forward to hearing your feedback. Hmm. Thank you, Jeremy, for the question. Interesting question. Um, I, I would actually just like to dig a little bit more as far as what what's the fear? Like, why is he concerned? Does he not have insurance? About getting fired? Does he not have the experience? Or is it just that he doesn't have the confidence because he's just... He just doesn't want to threaten his livelihood. Yeah, because what I what I see here is the possibility, Jeremy, uh, for you to bring a lot of value to your company. Totally right, and and to um, to expose them to some areas in which they could really enhance the services that they're offering. Agreed. No, yeah. agreed, one hundred percent. So, I I don't know. I mean, and I, I think that's where I'd start. Right. Think about the value that you can bring to the company that you're working for. And I, I, again, we don't know sort of the basis behind some his concern, but I really think um, it might do the opposite. I don't know. Maybe you get a promotion. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but here's the thing. Maybe he's struggling with how to use drones in security because uh, drones can be used in many different ways. And in fact, I think that drones can be used to solve all crime. It's something that we worked on. And in fact, you know, here in Albuquerque, a lot of mayors are talking about how, you know, they're going to stop crime. They're going to do this. And their message is all, almost synonymous across the candidacies. Mm-hmm. And I asked them, well, how do you plan on doing that there, guys? Because uh, no offense, but your marketing speak is not working and we need to know (laughs) how you're going to do it. So here's one way that this uh, this group, this security firm could use drones. Um, I, I think it would be really helpful. In fact, there's two ways. I'm going to go into the simple way and then I'm going to go into the how to solve all crime way. Um, and I hope that any mayoral candidacy is listening to this um, <laughs> or mayoral elect. Um, number one, if we were to map all of your or model 
all of your clients' properties, you would know the ins and the outs of every single property. So if Mm -hmm. the security firm was having to react to um, a call or react to an alarm going off, they would have a clear map and image of exactly what was around. So if it was very dark and it was difficult to see, they would know obstacles or potential hiding places for people. But the better way that they could be using drones for security is what I call persistent surveillance security or PSS. Um, Persistent surveillance security, essentially, imagine if you had a drone at every single, uh, at every single, how do I say this? Site. Site property. Mm -hmm. And it was tethered and it was constantly flying in the air. And even if the tether was cut, it would still have, say, 20 or 30 minutes of flight time so that if these criminals thought they were smart by cutting the tether, it would actually cause an alarm. And then you would use, you know, active track and actually track the person with infrared (laughs) as they were going around. (laughs) Um, But here's how you solve all crime, right? If every single site had a drone up high enough in not controlled airspace, Mm -hmm. or they were to get an authorization for controlled airspace. And we were able to cover the entire city via these properties. So these security companies really have a competitive advantage, guys like Dave. Um, If they were to have a persistent surveillance drone at every single site that was tethered, and they were taking a picture every single second of the entire day. You're opening a can of worms, Paul. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. <laughs> a um, big old can of nasty worms. Here, well, this is something that Cisco is doing, but on a lower level. It. So if you don't, if you think this is like my crazy idea and that it'll never come to fruition, it, it is actually happening in other cities right now. And I think that, uh, you know, I don't want to see drones flying all over the place, watching people all the time. Right. But I think with the trend in crime at a lower level, closed circuit TV, this could be very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, so what am I doing? What am I saying? So let's go back. If we had a drone at every single site that this security company had in the city, and we were actually able to cover enough ground to cover literally the whole city. So you wouldn't have to have a drone at every single block. It could be a couple blocks apart, but if it was flying high enough, you would get enough coverage to see the entire area. That makes sense. Sure. So all these cameras are taking a picture every second. Click, 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 click. So images and not video then. Images. Okay. Now, let's say that Rob over here gets Mm -hmm. one shiny bald idea, Mm. and he is going to rob the Wells Fargo on Wyoming and Paseo. Okay. (laughs) Rob did not do that, nor will he plan on doing that. I will not. Anyway, let's say hypothetically he does that. No need for the police to even... Got to pay for college. Yep. No need for the police to even respond. You know why? Hmm. So you rob the bank... You, you get your money and you drive back to your home or whatever. You drive <laughs> back to your hideout, whatever it is. This is right. what always happens. Mm-hmm. Now, instead of the police chasing you, they let you go mm-hmm. because they don't need to chase you. Here's why. There's if we're a take, series of images that show. If we take a picture every <laughs> single right. second and we're covering the entire city, mm. now all we do is we go back in time. We watch a few seconds before the actual robbery was uh, reported, mm-hmm. and we watch what car came up, and we see it was a silver. What is it? What do you drive? <laughs> a silver Dodge <laughs> truck. Truck. A silver Dodge truck that comes up, and then we go forward in time from when the robbery happened. Click, 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 and we actually watch the car go back to its little hiding spot, and we call the police and we tell them. It's over here at Paseo and Ventura. <laughs> Go get them, boys. Just went home and... And that's how you solve all crime in 10 minutes. <laughs> you go back in time to the oh, location wow. in photos, and then you go forward in time and you watch the car systematically drive back to wherever it's going. Yeah, that's a little freaky, to be It honest. is a little freaky, to be but honest, yeah. all, everyone should know in major cities across the United States is actually being used in two different ways. Baltimore, Persistent Surveillance Systems or persist, PSI out of Chicago is doing this in Baltimore right now, but they're using a fixed wing aircraft to do it. And it's just starting to be used as evidence in court. Number two, Cisco Systems is using it on a lower level closed circuit TV system. So all those cameras you see on poles at intersections. Yeah, so it's already happening. So because I just know we're going to hear from people, they're going to hate this idea. Uh, Yeah. There's cameras all over right now. They're on the, they're on the street lights. And that's why I waited three years to talk about this Yeah. because like I realize it's going to freak people out and I don't want to be watched all the time either. But at the same time, we've got to do something to help out police and... This has already happened. Well, and, and I will say this, that 
in in Albuquerque in particular, we have an issue that we're not really proud of as it relates to crime, right? Yeah. And and kind of where we rank with relate with uh, with crime. And um, the reality is, we're short policemen. Mm-hmm. We're short officers in terms of what we need for the coverage that we need. Yeah. So is this a way to overcome that or to supplement what's going on with our our policemen? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, um, there's definitely, I'm it, for all the people that are like, oh my God, why is he saying this? I know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's I understand like, why. Like Trust me, I understand why. Because we were actually working on a project that, that worked on this system and uh, we pulled out of it because of moral implications and yeah. ethical implications. Yeah, but just, right. It's not like we're giving people the idea. Yeah, no. People that can no, no, no. T- deploy and execute this. No, no, no. But uh, maybe anyway. Sandia National Labs did when we were working with them. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, but anyway, my point is, is that this would never come to fruition unless there's government funding for it. So for everyone sure. who's freaked out and scared by this idea, um, you don't be because governments are going to have to have funding for it. They're going to have to pay someone to watch all these cameras all the time. But I think that it really could, um, you know, it could really help. A lot of people would be like, well, what about my privacy? Well, normally these cameras are up so high with so low resolution. And I think that there should be standards set. I think, you know, for people who are afraid of this conversation, it's a good conversation to have because there are standards that we can set as a society to say, look, we're cool with solving crime, but we're not cool with you uh, giving up our privacy, which by the way, if you think that that's giving up your privacy, maybe you should stop carrying a cell phone around with you. Yeah, that, that's the thing is, is people hear this kind of a conversation about something so um, just controversial. High level. <laughs> yeah, controversial when in fact you're right. I mean, you're walking around with a device. You're walking every around with day. the best spying device on the planet. <laughs> that's right. Seriously. As much as we hate to admit it, it's, it's happening. Do you or, want, okay, so for everyone who thinks like, okay, I don't even use a cell phone, I can just use a screen. Do you know that if, if the feds wanted to, they could actually read what's on your screen because of the light that's being reflected off of your body from the screen? Oh yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> okay, so if I okay, so I have my computer here, right? Right, right in front of me. Yeah, you can't you. see what's on my screen. Uh-huh. But if it was a little bit darker in here and we didn't have all these studio lights on, people would actually be able to read my screen based off the reflection from my shirt read off your of the screen. screen from the camera on your co- on your computer, is that well, what you're saying? Well, they could do that too. But no, 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 I'm saying that like there is luminance off of this screen uh-huh. essentially. And that luminance, if it's against a wall or something reflective, yeah. could be read from a long distance away. Using, oh, using a camera that is somewhere. Yes. I gotcha. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. People are like worried about all this. Don't be worried about privacy. You've already given it away. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't like that. But No, no, no. Um, I, I don't either. I don't either. So anyways. Um, but I mean, literally, if you want to get into... Uh, a conversation about privacy. There's a couple cases you should look up. Uh, number one was the New York case. I think it was just a couple years ago for this lady who left her um, curtains curtains open. Shades, she left her yeah. curtains open, and some other guy was taking pictures of this girl who Sicko. was nude. Um, and then he actually put those pictures in a gallery because he was like, this is, I've taken every single one of these pictures from the same chair in my home. And this this lady sued him and the city of New York. And I I forget the court system. I think it was a federal, I forget who it was in all honesty, but they pretty much said that long story short, if you have your curtains open and you let, you know, people see into your home, you have no reasonable expectation of privacy. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, guys, I've, if I've upset some of you, I'm really sorry. My goal, though, is to start a discussion on, you know, if this does continue to happen, which it will, and it will have nothing to do with me and it will have nothing to do with you. It's a good conversation to have to discuss standards that should be set and met by governments to not only protect the people, but provide security. And I will say you should not give up privacy for security. Those things are hand in hand, not separate. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. You don't have to give up privacy for the sake of security. You can still have privacy and security. Yeah, indeed, yeah. Don't be fooled otherwise. So as far as Jeremy is concerned. Who's now mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I will be fired. He's like, <laughs> oh, can't bring that up. <laughs> I, I think in summary, what I would say is maybe sit down and, and just come up with um, a list of why you think 
your drone services would benefit the company that you work for. How are you going to bring them value and, and outline that and, and, and be able to articulate clearly that message? And, and I, I, again, without knowing what the fear is based on, I can't imagine that they're not going to be intrigued at a minimum. Well, I agree. And I think that just in those two instances that we provided, there are even more instances that drones could be used for security oh, purposes, sure. like doing live shooter situation with police. But there are standards that have to be met right. that have been set to say like, okay, if there's a drone pilot flying for the police or one of the police officers flying a drone, there has to be certain standards met that he can fly a drone to provide reconnaissance. Um, you know, when it comes to security, there's not only mapping, but there's permanent uh, permanent installation of services and goods. So it's actually really good also for insurance fraud. So for example, if um, you are providing security for someone and they say that things have been stolen, if you're mapping or modeling these sites, you know, four times a year or however, once monthly or whatever, you have a permanent record of installation of everything that's there. Mm -hmm. And if all of a sudden it goes missing, well, you can say, well, that wasn't there. That was there. Right. Um, I think the reconnaissance is big. Persistent surveillance systems is big. Um, I also think that, for example, there is a firm here in New Mexico, and I can't say who, I can't say what or why, um, but they want essentially a gridlock-like system mm -hmm. that would essentially automatically deploy a drone and run a pre-programmed route every hour to do reconnaissance to make sure things are safe. And I yeah. know it's being used right now. Yeah, I mean, it, like we've said, it's already happening. Eye in the sky. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, satellites have been doing it for, de thank you, for, Rob. for decades, thank right? You. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And not so, just in the Will Smith movies. Yeah, yeah. No, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people who I've talked to about this, there are some people that get really scared when you talk about eye in the sky. But you've got to be real and realistic that there are hundreds of satellites, if not hundreds of MQ-9s flying over you right now. And there is levels of data that are, that are already available. So, sure. and we've set standards for satellite imagery on what it's able to capture. And I think we should do the same with drones. That's the point of having this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So sorry mm. to go super deep on this one question. No, it'll be interesting to see the discussion that uh, is no doubt going to come. So, so will you title you this podcast then how security companies can use drones, how to solve all crime? Security oh. companies use drones, how to solve all crime. <laughs> I like that. That, that's a, that should be the title. Right. Anyway, I want to hear your feedback, guys. If you are a Drone You member, great. I want to hear in the community what you think about this uh, podcast. And if you're not a Drone You community member, I ask you why not? Because Drone You is a drone school from, for, well, for guys all the way from beginners to advanced. There's always something to be learned. And if you have the ideology of a lifelong learner, then you're going to love being a part of Drone You because you will always learn something new. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.